I'm joined now by one of the lawmakers who has come out against lifting Title 42. It's Texas Congressman Henry Cuellar. He is running for re-election in Texas's 28th district. He faces Jessica Cisneros in a Democratic runoff next month. Congressman Cuellar, appreciate you being here. Uh, before I get to Title 42, I got to ask about the news about your campaign uh, and your status. Uh, it's our understanding your lawyer has gotten assurances from the Justice Department that you're not a target of this Justice Department investigation, which led to a, uh, an FBI visit to your home. Do you understand why the FBI came to your home? Well, look, I have a deep respect for law enforcement. I got three brothers that are peace officers. And again, you know, we'll cooperate. Uh, but I think at the end of the day, they will show that there's no wrongdoing uh, in this situation. And we're going to win this election. Wait. Uh, no, but I understand that. Uh, what what assurance did you get that you're not a target? Well, again, I'll let my attorney speak to that. But uh, again, we'll cooperate at the end of the day, Chuck. Uh, yeah. It will show that there's no wrongdoing, and uh, we're going to win this uh, re-election again. Is do you is this have to do with uh, a relationship that some viewed as inappropriate with a donor? And I, I, again, uh, like I just said to you, Chuck, uh, mm -hmm. I'll let my attorney say that, but we're cooperating with uh, law enforcement. I have a deep respect for law enforcement. I got three bro brothers that are uh, peace officers and we'll continue working with them. But uh, at the end of the day, there will be no wrongdoing and we're going to win this re-election. And if you're happy to talk about Title 42. No, I, I, I am. But that you pledge to voters that this is not going to, if you win re-election, this is not going to upend your career. That is correct. Uh, they will show that there's no wrongdoing. Uh, and okay. we're going to win this election. Let's talk about what's going on at the border right now. You've got the the Title 42 issue. But I first want to ask you about what the governor is doing. Um, and I'm curious, I know you've sent a letter to him saying that these extra inspections, it's th that, that it's slowing down the supply chain. It's almost intentionally slowing down the economy here, hurting the border business. Um, do you understand why he's doing this? Well, look, the only thing that DPS or the state uh, police can do is to do mechanical checks. Check the tires, check the brakes, check the windshield wipers. Wipers. They cannot open up the cargo. So if they were trying to stop drugs or trying to stop uh, people from coming in, it's not doing that at all, except delay and add to the cost to the consumers. Mm -hmm. So again, you know, the governor did get the attention. Uh, but again, it, uh, you know, that's not the right solution, but we certainly uh, look forward to working with them. And the decision to bus migrants to Washington, D.C., uh, do you think a political stunt like that well, is effective? Well, uh, again, keep in mind the uh, Arizona versus the U.S., a, uh, a Supreme Court decision in 2012 says that the state does not have immigration policy. All he can do is get volunteers, people that want to go take a right to Washington, D.C., and again, he's trying to get attention uh, on that, but he cannot enforce immigration law because the Supreme Court said he cannot do that. The issue with Title 42 for advocates of lifting it is essentially that it really flies in the face of what America is supposed to be. You have an asylum claim around the world. The idea is, hey, we're going to listen to your asylum claim wherever you come from. We may not accept it, and we may eventually send you back, but it's, it's sort of a, this is what the United States is about. Why do you think it's important to keep these people from staying in the United States during their asylum process? Well, let's first talk about uh, asylum cases. If you put 100 people in front of an immigration judge, 88 to 90, uh, 88 to 90 percent of those people are going to have their cases uh, rejected by the immigration judge. So why are we letting 100 people in, 100 percent of them, when mm -hmm. uh, we should be only saying bienvenidos to only 10 to 12 percent? The system has to be at the border. It has to be more efficient. The way the administration, with all due respect, and we've given mm -hmm. them very constructive ideas, is not the right way of handling the border situation. Give me one idea right now that you think is easy to implement that could ease this problem and make asylum seekers feel heard? Well, you know, first of all, you know, we got to give them the due uh, process. So what we do is we have uh, those immigration judges at the border and give them their day in court at that at that particular place. Uh, instead, what would we do with immigration judges? We send them to where the people end up in New York and Chicago and other places, Miami, 
We need to have more immigration judges at the border. It took me two years, Chuck, to get eight immigration judges in Laredo, where we got thousands yeah. of people that come in. So we just got to be more efficient and more effective. Title 42 is a public health issue. It's a mixed message that the, uh, that the White House is sending. How can we still have a public health issue order extended for 90 days and then say there's no health issue and get rid of Title 42? All it does, it becomes a, mm -hmm. a, a, a marketing uh, process for the cartels to get more people into the United States. What is the hesitation about bringing the asylum court process to the border itself? I don't know. I mean, I've been finding this, uh, this issue for so many uh, years. And basically, I think uh, administrations, both Democrats and Republicans, do it backwards. They send the judges, and I've been adding more immigration judges than anybody. They send the judges to where the people eventually end up in New York, California. It's been a struggle trying to get them to bring more judges at the border so we can give them their mm -hmm. day in court. And again, if a judge says stay, then they stay. But if the judge says go, then we got to send them back without due respect. The way Jay Johnson uh, and President Obama were doing it, uh, right. I think we need to look at that playbook again. What would you be willing to support to help Mexico improve the treatment of these asylum seekers? This has been one of the arguments that, hey, they're, they're, they're not exactly uh, staying in the best of circumstances while they're in Mexico. Well, you know, again, there's ways so we can work with Mexico. We can provide them. If you're going to have uh, them, we, we can work with Mexico, provide them more resources. Or why, why not do this, Chuck? I want you to think outside the box. Look, right now, the coyotes come through, let's say, from Guatemala to Mexico. Some of them never make it. If it's a young lady, a cartel might say, you're going to stay here and work for us. Or it's a young man, they say, you know, right. you look strong. We're going to make you part of this. So why not do the asylum in those uh, countries and then fly them in? $500 a ticket will be a lot cheaper than them paying $8,000 to the Mexican cartels. Keep in mind that in six months, there were over m 1 million individuals that came into the United States just in six months. Mm -hmm. Multiply that by $8,000, that's $8 billion that the cartels made. So the cartels are going to be enriched by Title 42 going away on May 23rd. An interesting idea from you, Congressman. I want to just reinforce it here at the end. You want to see these judges do it in Guatemala, do it in Honduras, send the asylum, uh, you know, in, in, enhance our uh, presence down there. Interesting idea. I'm going to, the next time I hear from an administration official on this, I plan to ask him about your idea. Congressman Henry Cuellar, Democrat from South Texas, Thank thanks you. for coming on. Appreciate it.